Chapter 7 The Sev War The years that followed were good for Sade and Bondalis. Training, learning, growing in power. Raven, as a rescuer called himself, became Sade's mentor, his order of sorcerers, the Sev War, their family. At times, Sade was astonished as to his own backwardness, his limited ambitions. Once, he would have been content to remain on Illocane with his mother and brother for life. When that explained most humans had not the power of magic, but some were born with the gift. Among those with the gift, most would only ever work a weather spell with the simplest of elements, wind and water. These were the men and women Sade already met, like Gerald and his lot. But among those with power, a few had potential to learn and work the greater spells of all four elements, including earth and fire, spells of power, of healing, maiming, even life and death. These sorcerers could endow objects with power, they could walk the pathways of the spirit, and could even speak with the dead. These were the sorcerers that the Sevwar sought out to join their ranks, and this was where that Sade had the potential to be. You do not even understand your gift right now, Raven said to Sade. You were lucky not to be consumed by your own release of power on the judgment. It was raw, unbridled, and undisciplined. One we Sev War perceived with our own mind's eye. We knew it could only have been accomplished by a powerful enemy or someone untrained. And am I your enemy? Sade asked. Raven smiled, his long legs lifted to the table, his polished boots and their buckles shining. His hazel eyes squinted and he turned his narrow head towards Sade and his brother. That remains to be determined, he answered. But think hard on your decision. This is an opportunity you will only be offered once. Sade and Vondalus took it, and were glad they had. For when they first glimpsed Slitstone, the rocky isle atop which was anchored the Sevwar fortress and school, Sade knew they both had finally come home. There was a niche for each of them. The Sevwar trained boys of power to be sorcerers, but even sorcerers needed brawn. A small army of warriors also lived on the isle and trained to be killers in order to protect their masters. Vondalus was their best pupil. Sade imagined that as powerful as they were, the Sevwar would answer to no one. But he was wrong. The Sevwar were themselves servants, but to whom Raven was vague. We serve the eight. That is all you need to know for now. Later, you will learn more of our secrets. Sade spent the first three years learning magic, studying long hours in the libraries, standing upon hilltops practicing his craft alongside other novices. Some fell out. Only the strongest and hardest of heart could advance. When a boy showed too much weakness, compassion, or any lack of loyalty to the order, he was sent away on a boat, home, if he had one, exiled from the Sevwar forever. The order was careful in how it chose novices. Elders picked boys with backgrounds similar to Sade and Vondalus, orphans, tramps, and refugees. All had learned how to survive in the world by their wits or fists, and all recognized that rules were arbitrary, morals an unnecessary compromise, and only power mattered. So, when a younger novice was caught stealing from Sade's fishing gear, he had taken one of Sade's feathered lures. The elders gave Sade permission to decide his punishment. Can I kill him? Sade asked with sincerity. If that is the punishment you choose, Raven told him. But in the end, Sade chose to spare him, not because of mercy, but rather power. He thought it was better to have the boy indebted to him. His life would belong to Sade. Not a bad trade for a fishing lure. The fourth year was one of travel. Not yet a full sorcerer, Sade did not wear the black cloak of the Sevwar, but an indigo one that stopped short of his knees and allowed him to climb and clamber about the deck of their ship, the North Wind. It was a small schooner, with a crew of just twelve other young Sevwar. But Sade was given command, and he did not hesitate to make Vondalus his first mate. Their mission was trade, to barter for goods and bring valuables back to Slitstone. For the isle itself had little to offer but protection and isolation. There was no place to grow crops of any sort. They did not announce themselves as Sevwar, but they did not have to. With his warriors, his servants, and his own aura of power, Say did not need to announce his authority with the black cloak or the broken ring that the Sevwar elders all wore about their necks. Their own experiences had given him and his brother a sense of worldliness, and their own betrayals a suspicion of everyone. 
They were both hard taskmasters and cunning leaders. So, it was at such a pinnacle of confidence that they sailed back into Greatport. Their subordinates traded and bartered. After a year at sea, Sade had made sure all of them could negotiate a good price without using magic or charms to confuse the minds of their counterparts. He wanted them to be men of the world as well as mages, and that meant learning to rely on their wits as much as their power. Sade spent a whole day exploring the libraries and book markets, searching for spell books. He found a few, bought three, only one of which was useful to him. The other two, he decided to distribute to the novices on the North Wind. It was evening when Sade returned to their camp on the beach. He was finishing a meal of boiled mussels and potatoes when Vondalus returned from his own errand. He approached on horseback with six figures in tow, each stumbling through the sand, their hands bound and their faces obscured by hoods. The other lads around the fire stirred, wondering what Vondalus was bringing into their midst. They had traded for goods, some legal, some not, but they had never traded in slaves. Sade set down the bowl of mussels and potatoes. Vondalus was pleased with himself. A look of satisfaction splayed across his face. He grabbed the tallest of the figures, threw him down on the ground next to the fire while Sade pulled a branding iron from their gear and nestled it in with the coals. He conjured the flames higher with a flick of his wrist. The figure struggled to get up, but Vondalus let loose such a kick in his stomach that he wet his britches. Sade made a tis tis noise with his tongue as he bent down and removed the hood. Hello, Gerald. Their old master looked up, blinking against the light, gasping for breath as Vondalus's kick had knocked the wind out of him. It took him a few moments to compose himself, take in his surroundings, and finally recognize Sade. Beneath his cloak, Sade was dressed in boiled leather armor with polished buckles, his fingers a glitter with rings, his hair a proper length and cut. He had been transformed from the helpless waif Gerald had known. Sade could not help a smile as he considered the dramatic change he had undergone. Even his brother was a larger man now, adorned in ring mail, a belt of daggers, short swords, and a hatchet. One clear difference, however, were the scars on Vondalus' face from the beating he had taken on the judgment. And for that, Sade had never forgiven Gerald. Look at my face, Gerald. Listen to my voice. You know me. The drunk's hands were shaking. Whether from lack of drink or fear, Sade could not tell. He looked much the same. Perhaps the clothes were a bit worse for wear. Perhaps they had always been, and Sade only noticed now as his own were not. There were deeper lines around Gerald's eyes, and a few more purple and pink veins visible on the end of his nose. His hair was thinner, too. But otherwise, it was the same face Sade had grown accustomed to. The same man who had taught him so much. A man whom he had trusted. A mentor. Who had betrayed him. That familiar face made the hurt feel fresh, as if it had been just the day before that they had been sold to slaves. Gerald, for his part, kept his head lowered, ready to grovel. Only the sound of Sade's voice made him look up. Sade? And my brother, Von Dalis. He was the one who abducted you and your family. Gerald's eyes started, his mind working, calculating before he began to plea. Please, please, Sade. My lord, Sade, show mercy. I know how you felt betrayed by my actions, but I did what I thought best. I could have handed you over to the king's men, but I didn't. They would have killed you. So you sold us as slaves. We would have met the same fate, Gerald. Look at my brother's face and you can see the price we paid. But a price that was not death. You survived. Don't be mistaken. That fact will not help you, Gerald, Sade said, and motioned to Vondalus to remove the hoods of the rest of Gerald's family. Jillian looked upon them with the same horror that she had worn that day in the stairwell. The girls were all older, their hair tousled and flattened against their faces, but it was obvious that each one had grown beautiful. Sade could read the hope in their eyes that he would be forgiving, lenient. After all, had he not sat at the same table to break bread with them, had they not played with him and his brother in the yard? Sade had even taught all three of them their letters and numbers. But to Sade, the die was already cast by their mendacious father long ago. He looked away from them to the sixth figure, a boy about the same age as Sade when Gerald first took them in. He looked more terrified and confused than all the others. A new apprentice, Gerald. Yes. Sade considered the boy. He was gaunt, 
dressed in rags and had bags under his eyes. Another waif, unwanted and off the streets, landing with a drunk of a master. Von Dalas, let him go. He should not pay for the fault of his master, Sade said. Von Dalas loosed the ropes tying his hands, but the boy remained frozen in place. You are free to go, or stay, or even join us, Sade said. We once served your master, but he betrayed us. However, had he not, we would never have met our brothers in the Sev War, and I would have never discovered my power. Sade waved his hands and conjured the flames of the campfire even higher. It roared, as if oil had been poured upon it. Gerald cowered from the heat. The light danced on the delicate cheekbones of his daughters. Please, show my family mercy as I showed you, Gerald said. Punish me, but not them. Tears were running down his face as he reached out for Sade and took hold of the edge of his cloak. Sade shook his head, aware that all his crew, the younger Sevor, and the accompanying warriors were watching this trial unfold. While Sade judged Gerald, he knew he was also being judged. Your fate is decided, Sade said, lifting the brand, now red hot from the coals. It was sealed the moment you sold us away. But I will not seek revenge. Revenge would be to simply kill you. This is justice. Justice insists that you come to the same fate we did. Gerald's eyes followed the smoking brand as Sade waved it in the air. Von Dalis and the three other anticipated what was coming next and wrestled Gerald down to the ground, holding his limbs. Turn him over, Sade said. I want to see his face. The fifth joined them in order to hold Gerald's head still. Sade jammed the brand down on his former master's forehead. The skin hissed, the tendons in Gerald's neck corded as he screamed, his mouth opening so wide that Sade could see where he was missing molars. He was older, a drunk who had wrecked his body with alcohol, but with his knowledge of weather working, he would earn a fair price as a slave. With a brand on his forehead, he would be one for life. Gerald's family cried out as if they were being branded themselves. Jillian pleaded, the girls wept. They were too attractive to brand. Their looks would be all the worse they would have, for Sade already knew their fates. The apprentice had disappeared. Sade saw him kicking up sand as he fled down the beach. Gerald was gasping, reaching his hands up but stopping short of touching his scorched forehead. Sade took in the faces of his crew, noting expressions of respect, amusement, even pride. But most importantly, he could see that they all feared him. Although he knew that he had shown strength, determination, and will, Sade was now disgusted with the whole affair. He was eager to be done with Gerald and to have him out of his sight. Von Dalis, take them to the quay and sell them. Make sure they do not end up on the same ship together. I want them scattered. He turned to Gerald. Perhaps a few years of hard labor will be good for you.